Hi everyone, this is Chris Almas from the Hamilton Touch Football Officials Association. In this video, I'm going to review how to properly set the banks. To set up the field, the HL for this video will be on the left side of the field. The umpire will be on the hash mark on the right side of the field, about 17 yards down from the line of scrimmage. And the head referee will be positioned approximately two to three yards in front of the quarterback and approximately eight to 10 yards to the right side of the quarterback. This will create our three-man triangle. The field should also be broken in to seven zones. The first zone will be out of bounds on the head linesman's side. The second zone will be between out of bounds on the left side and the hash mark on the left. The third zone will be the left hash mark. The fourth zone will be the middle of the field between the two hash marks. The fifth zone will be the right hash mark. The sixth zone will be between the right hash mark and out of bounds. And the seventh and final zone will be out of bounds on the far side of the field opposite the headlinesman. Now in order to get an accurate spot, it is critical that one of the three officials is standing precisely where the blade of grass is bent, where the player holding the ball was ultimately tagged or went out of bounds. If this occurs, on the HL sideline all the way to the first hash mark, in this case, the left sideline to the left hash mark, it is the HL who will occupy this position precisely where the tag was made. If on the other hand, the tag or the play finished from the left hash mark all the way to the right out of bounds marker, that means from zone three to seven, then it will be the umpire that stands precisely on the blade of grass where the tag was made. Now, if the play ends in the backfield, it will be the head referee's responsibility to mark the blade of grass with his blue bag and then get into location to set the banks, which will be thrown to him by the umpire. So now we're going to see this live. We've simulated these plays by taking the teams out of the equation, and we'll see all three officials moving to set the banks. You should see what appears like an accordion effect being that when the play starts, the officials are wide. As the play finishes, all three officials will migrate into the middle of the field, set the bags, and then again go back out. So this is an accordion effect going in and out. The reason we do this is that we want to have the officials after a play in the middle of the field so they have greater presence and they can have more awareness to the teams and the players. It also allows us to take care of any issues that might be taking place on the field, and it allows us to talk to players, to warn them of infractions, or just to congratulate them on a good play. So here we go. Now the first play will be a short play. The ball has been thrown, the whistle has been made, and the clock starts. Notice that the head referee will pick up the bags. The umpire and the headlines meaning nothing but looking at the spot. That play finished just outside the HL sideline and he passed the play off to the umpire. The umpire received the bags from the referee and 19 seconds later, we're already ready for the next play. This is the second play. In this particular case, the ball again has been thrown just outside the headlinesman's area. He's standing exactly where the play ended and the umpire is getting lined up and the referee throws him the bags. The umpire paces off the yards, repeats the down to the referee and is in position and 23 seconds later we're ready to go for the next play. This play ends out of bounds. Notice that the headlinesman stands out of bounds and waits for the umpire to get into position. The umpire gets lined up with the head linesman, stands on the hash mark, receives the bags from the head referee. In this case, the head referee had to grab the first two bags, give them to the umpire, and then pick up the first down bag, which was located on the other side of the field. Completing these tasks, everybody is back into position, and the play is whistled in only when they're in position some 26 seconds later. Now, as you can see, 
this play ends precisely where the enlightenment is standing. The umpire has noted that this is close to a first down and has told the referee you might need to measure this. The referee goes to this point to measure it and walks to the closest straight line across the field. He then walked across to where the first down marker is, repositions and walks to measure the field. In this case, the measurement determines that it is a first down. He hands the bags to the umpire. As soon as the bag is set, the head linesman retreats into position. As he's setting the bags, the referee retreats into position. And again, with the measure, 48 seconds later, we're ready to go for the next play. Now this play is on the umpire's side of the field. It's been whistled dead, and the umpire in the spot precisely where the blade of grass was bent where the play ended. This is marked by the cone on the field. Again, the head referee gets all of the bags, hands it to the umpire, and the umpire walks off the appropriate yardages. Once the bag is set, the head linesman will immediately retreat to his sideline position. Some 25 seconds later, we're ready to go for the next play. Again, this particular play is taking us out of back into zone 7. The umpire will hold that spot ready for a measure if necessary. Again, the head referee will pick up the bags, and now the referee will set the bags since he is closest to the play and receive the bags from the head linesman who is always coming into the middle of the field to help out. Release. Again, once the first bag is set, the head linesman and the umpire will retreat to their position the head linesman will come back, signal the down, and we're ready to go for play some 33 seconds later. The next play ends again in the umpire's area of responsibility. He will obtain the blade of grass precisely where the tag was made. The head referee will grab the bags and spot them. And you'll notice the head linesman is now retreating from his position while he was giving a secondary spot to the umpire. Any spots from the umpire's area, usually the umpire has the best location since he is closest to the spot, but the head linesman is certainly there to help line up the umpire if necessary. This particular play ends in the middle of the field. Again, the umpire will occupy the blade of grass where the play ended. The head referee will grab the bags and the HL will walk in to the hash mark. And now we're ready to set the bags and the process continues. And so this is a cycle that continues over and over again. When the play ends, all officials come in. Then when the first bag is set, all officials retreat to position. And just by walking, in most cases, we have the bag set between 20 and 25 seconds. Okay, now we're gonna put it all together. Now I want you to understand, speed kills. Rushing as an official does nothing but put us in a bad position and doesn't get us ready to make a good call. So let's take a look at how long it takes for teams to get into position to see if there's any reason to even justify the rushing that we do in between plays. Now you'll notice that teams walk back to the huddles. This is true in 90% of the cases. It is rare for teams to sprint back to the huddle. They typically want to use this time to conserve their energy. In most plays, it takes approximately 20 seconds for a team simply to get back into their huddle. If we have the bag set within 20 to 25 seconds, we will not be interrupting the flow of the game whatsoever, and will still give us about 10 to 15 seconds to do our pre-checks prior to the play. In this particular case, the team broke their huddle at approximately 38 seconds, and they didn't snap the ball until approximately 50 seconds. In the next play, you'll see again the very short gain. All players did a short hook pattern. This is about as quick as it could possibly get in a typical game situation, and it still takes them 15 seconds to all get into the huddle and get ready to communicate their next play. We're waiting to see how long it takes to break the huddle, that's 21 seconds, and then they'll snap the ball at approximately 33 seconds. So as you can see, there is no rush 
so long as we are purposeful and quick with our bags. So in conclusion, speed kills. This is a football officials adage which is used in various different leagues including the CFL and NFL. Rushing only leads to mistakes. There is no need for us to kill ourselves on the field, sprinting in several circles trying to get the bags set in 10 seconds. Teams typically take at least 30 seconds before they are ready to snap the ball. We, with walking motions, should have the bag set in 20 to 25 seconds. In a hurry up, certainly we will jog faster, but this clearly shows that we can get the bag set in more than enough time so long as all three officials work together and follow the proper mechanics. So once again, this is Chris Almas from the Hamilton Touch Football Officials Association. I hope you enjoyed this training video and get a better understanding as to how all three officials can work together to accurately and quickly set the bags without expending too much energy so you can do more games and have more fun.